All right, so we have a very special guest today on the program, a returning guest. Last time we had her and her husband, Mitchell, great golfer, and uh, she's back on to tell a story about her book. This is Taryn Gregson. You can follow Taryn at Taryn. It's T-E-R-Y-N Gregson, G-R-E-G-S-O-N on Instagram, Twitter. It's TarynGregson.com. If you want to watch all of her old shows on Rumble, you can go to Faithful Freedom with Taryn Gregson. Uh, she also does an organization with her husband. It's a golfing Christian organization, drivingdisciples.org. She has a book. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying that's what I'm wearing. Oh, my, she's my wearing shirt the shirt, today. the Driving, driving Disciples, disciples. shirt. Mm -hmm. And um, she does have a movie out, shotdead.org. Anybody that's vaccine injured or if you have a family member uh, that had an issue with this vaccine in general, uh, should watch the movie shotdead.org. And then what we're having the interview about is her new book, The Only Life That Matters Is God. It's using the Bible to transform your life on social media. Uh, Taryn, I was struggling to get through all that. You've done so many things uh, throughout your time, and I appreciate you coming on. It's always great to uh, talk to you about the book and everything else in the kitchen sink. I know, right? Uh, God has blessed us to have all these different projects, and we just welcomed our third child. We just built our new log cabin home on our new homestead. We moved across the country, um, you know, basically, I guess, shortly after the last time that we spoke, about a year ago, we moved across country back to our Midwest roots, and so now we're here raising our family and um, launching this Bible study and book, which is about four years in the making. I actually wrote this book back in a little, started it in 29, at the end of 2019, wrote the majority of it in 2020 while I was still working as a broadcaster for the PGA tour. I had so many moms and parents messaging me on social media. I had been a part of sports media and social media content creation for about um, 10 years, a little more than a decade by that point. And people were messaging me saying, you know, I'm struggling with this. My teens are struggling with this. What are some rules and parameters I should be putting in place? Well, you know, for, from my standpoint, I have very young kids. I don't have teenagers, so I don't know that I have the authority to tell uh, parents what rules they should be instilling in their teenagers. And secondly, I remember what it was like to be a teenager. Rules are no fun. You don't want to follow rules when you're a teenager. And so I said, you know, this is just like anything else. We need to be approaching social media from a biblical worldview. That's really how we're going to transform how we look at it. That's how we will transform how we approach it, consume it, and take part in it. That's really the only way we're going to have lasting change is if we come at it from a biblical worldview. And so many people that are Christians don't do that because it's such a secular medium, social media is. And so many um, don't really approach it in that in that arena. And, you know, I gave a speech at our church's youth group down in Florida, the church that we were members of at the time, about Jesus being the ultimate influencer. And I said, you know what, I can talk so much more about this. And so this blossomed into a book. It is an interactive Bible study. There are uh, scripture studies at the end of each chapter. And then when um, I got fired from the PGA tour for saying no to their COVID protocols and, and um, their rejection of my religious exemption, then um, my book deal, everything fell apart with the book. And so I kind of sat on it for a little while. And once I started doing my show, uh, Faithful Freedom with Taryn Gregson, that was syndicated for two years um, in partnership with We the Patriots USA, who I did my documentary with, um, once I started working with them, God kind of, the Holy Spirit nudged me and said, it's time to, people really need this message. It's time to, to do this. And so Skyhorse Publishing said, yes, we'll, we'll jump on board. And I actually ended up writing a few more chapters for this because as God would have it, you know, I experienced a cancel culture moment with, um, you know, being fired. I have a lot of back, I had a lot of backlash from people. I had a lot of threats and I had some, you know, smear articles written about me in the USA Today and various uh, na national publications for standing up to the, the COVID protocols. And I know so many kids on a micro level are 
experience cancel culture from their peers. They're scared of their, or they're scared of cancel culture from peers. Um, they experience harassment on through social media, whether it's private messaging or just blatant, uh, you know, embarrassing moments displayed for everyone through somebody else posting it on social media. Um, I know a lot of kids are, um, are also struggling with pornography. They're struggling yeah. with modesty and how to approach that on social media. And so, you know, my, I hope that my cancel culture moment can help these kids and let them know, Hey, there's life on the other side of it. And when you're walking through a difficult situation, how do you look at scripture? How do you use discernment to walk you through this online and through social media? And so that's really how the lifespan of this book and how it all took off. And so I hope and I pray that people pick it up individually and look look through it. I hope that people also are encouraged to get you know groups together and do a book study, a Bible study um, together in their small groups for this, because I think that teenagers can benefit from this, parents can benefit from this, women everywhere uh, can benefit from this, and um, basically everyone, because social media is an issue for every single person. I've had my own struggles with it as well. And you have the book behind you for people that are watching mm -hmm. this. Uh, if you're listening to it, um, we will talk more about the book as we go on. I do have the book, and I'm very grateful that Taryn did mail me a copy and wrote a very nice note as far as a thank you letter in there. And I appreciate you having you as a friend and Mitchell too, as well. Uh, well, let's continue on because we did talk about the pornography aspect of social media. I want to dive into the sex trafficking aspect, the furry aspect with the yeah. transgenderism too, that's being pushed around in society today. So let's talk about that because I think that's very important and people listening to this uh, may want to dive into that as well. There's a lot of satanic behavior going around in the world, not to mention the country. Obviously, you know, what we just mentioned, uh, the transgenderism, woman in sports, open borders, abortion, the list goes on and on. How do young people navigate through this or even young parents such as yourself? How do you navigate through this? This is why it is so essential to lean on the scripture. When you have a solid foundation in the truth, in God's word, then all of the various confusing lies that the spiritual warfare that we're experiencing around us, then you're able to stand up to that, or you're able to discern on your own and know and spot these things and know, okay, no, you know, this is not correct. God created male and female. Um, you know, God has guidelines for modesty and how I should present myself or um, how other people should interact with me. Um, there are, you know, various uh, things throughout the Bible that these, these struggles that we are having, they are nothing new under the sun, right? Just as the Bible says, we, God's people have experienced these things in various forms throughout time. And so social media is just a different lens in which we are experiencing these things. Now, I do have to say that teens and, and kids nowadays are experiencing it, it seems to be from a hyper, um, you know, a hyper exposed level. They are being inundated with these messages left and right because of social media at a high volume on a regular basis. And so that's why we have to get our kids back into the Bible, our teens back into the Bible and show them what scripture says about modesty, what scripture says about adultery. When Jesus says, you know, when you look at someone and lust after them that, and, and they are not your wife, you are committing adultery in your heart. You know, these are heart issues that we're dealing with in society. And so we dive into these things in the book and that's why it's so important we, that we do this, the sanctity of life. You brought up abortion. You know, God creates life in his own image. Every life is precious. And unfortunately, social media is giving us these, these messagings that are the opposite of that. And so um, that's why it is essential for for teenagers to be able to develop discernment, to be able to put on the armor of God. And how do you apply the armor of God to social media? How do you apply it to your everyday life? You know, let's walk people through how you use the sword of the spirit, how you use um, all these various, the helmet of salvation, how these things remind us of how we are supposed to act when we are on social media. This is how we're going to, going to equip our kids to have real life application for how they 
that they apply these biblical principles to the various lies that they are being um, pressured with every single day. And, you know, I have some statistics in the book from Yako Buyans. He has his own ministry and I've had him on actually Faithful Freedom with Taryn Gregson, the show that I, that I was doing prior to having my third child. And, you know, he talks about that, you know, transgenderism is a confusion. It's a, it's a sexual perversion. And those various things snowball into when you have those ideals, those ideologies in society, it snowballs into things like pornography when our our males are being exposed to sexual uh, imagery from a very early age. They're seeing right. pornography at eight years old, most of them. That's an average age now, eight years old. And so, um, you know, people, kids are sending each other private messages that are inappropriate um, of, you know, themselves with little to no or no clothes on because they have been exposed to these things and society is trying to groom them to make this, to make these things normal. And it's not, God wants us to have modesty. He wants us to protect our kids. He wants us to protect ourselves and our bodies and reserve those for, uh, for people inside marriage. And so um, it's hard though for kids to understand that and see that when they are not flooding themselves with biblical messaging, they're flooding their feeds with societal messages. And so we need to flip the script on that. We need to reverse that and, and be pouring more of God's truths into our children and into ourselves um, so that we are able to discern the lies of the times that we are seeing on social media at a clip that we've never seen before. So how do we get the young people there? Because there's so much toxicity on going to church, on reading the Bible. Christians are persecuted every day. Look what we're seeing in England. Look what we're seeing in this country where there was an elderly woman, 80 some odd years old, that was protesting against abortion. They locked her up in prison. We've seen this around the country in general and around the world. How do we get you to be interested in the Bible? I mean, we do have the parochial schools. You can do the homeschooling, but there's got to be other ways. I know we have the Hallow app, Mark Wahlberg. Uh, an actor who came out with the Hallow app is The Chosen, which is a great series on TV uh, that does show the life of Jesus Christ. Uh, and I'm sure there's other uh, spots, too, where the Bible is pushed into social media and movies, but not as much as we would like, Darren. I think that um, there is a lot of hope, right? People in general, especially our youth, are starving. They are starving for social connection. They're starving for community. They are starving for purpose. Um, social media has very much removed the purpose from our children. They don't have goals. They don't have daily uh, goals where they have to accomplish certain things throughout the day. Instead, they're sitting there, you know, scrolling on their on their social media feed. Um, social media can be good. It can be a tool for good. And there are a lot of, as you mentioned wonderful uh, resources on social media. There's a lot of wonderful, people are getting more and more bold. There's a lot of wonderful influencers on social media that you can follow, churches, resources, biblical resources, um, Christians, modern Christians that, you know, are everyday people just like you and me um, that, you know, aren't necessarily your grandparents, right? You know, people that are, that are young and, and love the Lord and have seen it transform their lives. And so kids are hungry for that transformation. They are hungry for their lives to be transformed. Jesus Christ is the only one that can do so for eternity for these kids. And so we can use social media for good by monitoring who you follow. Let's start to, to tell these kids that they need to to be looking and being very mindful of who they are following and therefore what they are seeing on social media. Use it as a way to kind of form an outer shell of a community around you. Social media should not be your primary community. It should be your outer shell of your community. It can be a wonderful outer shell of a community that can bolster your faith walk. You can get little tidbits of biblical theology and truth that help to richen your understanding and knowing of God. It can also be a way to connect with people, to become faith friends with people. Faith friends is something that I go over in the book, and it's something that has helped me and transformed my life is to have uh, believers around me that have 
that have helped me in my faith walk and mentored me. And you can connect with your faith friends on social media. On Instagram, send them a send them a snippet of a sermon that you saw a church post on their social media that inspired you, that made you know God more. Send that to them. So that shows that person that you love them and that you care about them and you want them to grow. And who knows how the Holy Spirit will touch them with that, with Bible verses, you can stay plugged in via social media on the different events that are happening at various churches in your area. You can find a church on social media if you don't have one. Many churches have a wonderful social media presence. Some churches have no social media presence at all. And maybe that's a signifier that you'll like that church, right? Um, you know, you can use that in, in various ways. Use social media as a outer shell of a community, but do not replace it as your time of corporate worship and fellowship and small group time together. We have been created by our wonderful God to need in-person fellowship. We have to do life on life with people. And that is how we will come out of this depression. This great, this is this, this is, we are in a great depression brought on by the, by technology. Our children are more depressed and the suicide rates are higher than they've ever been. And it's because we have lost that person to person connection. Watching church on TV throughout the week might be great. If you're sitting on Wednesday here and you need a good uh, sermon to to lift you up or to to help you to learn a certain Bible passage at a, in mm -hmm. greater depth. But it should not be what you do every Sunday. You should still be getting into that church building and having life on life fellowship with other people. Your children should still be involved in youth activities in the church. And the only way that those are going to be lasting for your children is if you as the parent are the example. You also need to be involved in church. You also need to be involved in your community because why should a kid continue to do that um, into their adult life? You know, we have an epidemic where children are leaving the church at a clip of 50% by the time they reach adulthood. And that's not even considering the fact that what only like 9% of people actually go to church on regularly on Sunday. So of those 9% of Americans, 50% of those fall away from the church as they enter adulthood. So there is definitely a big disconnect and it's social media is one of those things. And uh, I think another big thing is that parents aren't involved in it either. Listen, social media is a, it's the breaking point. It is what is showing us that we need to lean on God more than we've ever been able, more than we've ever needed to before. This is the breaking point, social media. We have been on this track for quite some time. God's people have gone in various cycles throughout, uh, throughout, you know, time and where God's people fall away from him. And then they learn that they need to lean back on God. We are in that, in that cycle right now where we are social media is the breaking point showing us that we need to lean back on God. We have had fast paced lives for quite some time for many generations. Technology has continued to escalate that social media was our tipping point and knowing that, okay, we need to slow down. We need to be more intentional about life. Parents, we need to be more involved in the community instead of, you know, running around from place to place every day um, and various things. We need to make time for our churches. We need to make time for our schools, for our communities, and therefore our children will see that as an example. And then they will see that life and people around life are more important than the lies that they are seeing on social media. So social media is one of the, the steps and how all of this comes together to create a more enriched life for people everywhere, for our kids everywhere, because that's what's happening. People are starving. People are depressed. Social media can be used as a tool instead of right now. It's it's an idol for so many. So many of us spend more time on social media than we do anything else throughout our day. It has become an idol and people are starving to break free from that. Social media is our tipping point to see that we need God. And this book is going to help you take steps to see how we got here, to see why we're here, how to recognize how you fall into traps like comparison, traps like um, like coveting and 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 not being grateful, and how you can then use the traditional things like 
uh, the armor of God, using what I call the faith filter, your biblical worldview, filtering everything through a biblical lens that you're consuming on social media, all these various tools, setting time parameters for yourself. You know, I know I mentioned at the beginning of the interview that rules only go so far and I stand by that. Um, but we do need to put in parameters. Um, so that way we're not spending too much of our days on social media, but that also plays into it's easier to set up these parameters once you're able to discern these things from a biblical standpoint. You froze for a second, but you're back in action. So oh. that's positive. So we're good to go there. Uh, but I do want to recalibrate here for everybody listening. It's at Taryn Gregson, TerrenGregson.com. The drivingdisciples.org. We'll get to that as the interview ends. And again, shotdead.org. Definitely check out that as well as far as the movie that Taryn made a few months back. And then the book, as we're speaking about, the only like that matters is God. And it's using the Bible to transform your life on social media. Uh, Taryn, as we keep going into the interview, can you talk about this? Because our society has the attention span of a goldfish. Everything's 10 second clips, five second clips. Uh, we see this on YouTube, uh, TikTok, the list goes on and on due to obviously social media and the phones. What's the remedy to change this dynamic? Because it's affecting the young people's social skills as well as even the people our age and you're older. We have to view our lives in the lens of eternity. I talk about something called soul influence in the book. And so instead of social influence, having soul influence on people, having an, an internal impact on people and, and fixing our eyes individually and collectively on eternity rather than on the here and now in the present. And so when we look to Jesus as our ultimate influencer, the one who is the biggest social influencer of all, instead of, you know, all the various people that have millions of followers on social media and whatnot, if we look to Jesus as our ultimate influencer, we will then be able to look at various things happening um, from an eternal lens, from an eternal standpoint, where we are looking at how things affect your eternal standing with God, rather than um, your day-to-day -day, uh, various headlines that come and go. And yeah, we live in this fast paced clip of, of life, and we should be plugged into the various things that are um, in a sense to, you know, the news and the headlines of the day and of the world. But I think many of us need to step back from that and realize that God is in control. He has each and every one of us in the palm of his hands if we let him. And we cannot control everything happening in the world around us. We cannot change the world. Only God can change the world. We individually cannot do that. So the most influence that anybody has regardless of who you are, is on the immediate people around you. Your sole influence is on the people that are inside your home, first and foremost, the people that you interact with the most on a daily basis, whether that's your coworkers, fellow students, um, you know, the various clubs or organizations that you're involved in, and then, you know, your community around you. That is where you, God has put you for such a time as this. That is how you're going to have an impact. I think so many people have anxiety because they see all these negative headlines that are just bombarding them on a day-to-day -day basis and they feel helpless. They feel like they don't have a way to remedy the, the various things that are happening. And in a large part, you don't. You don't have... Um, that much impact on what's happening in Washington, D.C. You don't have that much impact on what's happening across the world um, in various countries um, across the world. You don't have, you know, a ton of impact on what the WHO is doing. But what you do have impact on is the people around you. You need people need to stop thinking of themselves. OK, I only have a couple followers on social media. I'm not a social influencer that's wrong. You are a soul influencer. You have people around you that God has put you in their path for a reason. And, and simultaneously, they're in your path for a reason that we can all learn from each other. We can all impact each other for eternity. And we all need to realize that these, these daily headlines are not going to affect us. Um, for heaven and and for uh, Jesus Christ coming back and making a new heaven on earth, we have to look at things from an eternal standpoint, um, while still being informed citizens. But 
but being soul influencers, as opposed to having that pressure of being a social influencer, God is the one that can change the world. You can't. And that should actually be a relief, a burden taking off of your shoulders. And, um, you know, that's what Jesus says that he is his, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So, um, that I think changing your, once again, it's all about that faith filter and having a different lens and how you view all these things. I want to go to the audience questions as we move toward the end of the interview. And I even, it's an audience question, but it's a question from me as well. You know, men are getting treated like crap nowadays by women. There's women saying they don't need a man. They don't want a man. Mm -hmm. uh, men are more likely to commit suicide now. Mm -hmm. Men are not having sex now. Uh, couples are not having kids. Uh, there's people mm -hmm. that say they are pro-abortion. They used to say pro-choice. Yeah. Now it's they just come out right out and say they're pro-abortion. They can't say they're pro-choice now, Taryn, because pro-choice would have men with the vax. They would have gave you a choice. My body, my choice, not just for abortion, for the vax, too. They can't say that anymore. So they just come out and write, say that they're pro-abortion. What is going on? with men and women in this country, obviously you're out of the game. You've been married for a little bit of time. You have kids, but I'm sure you have <laughs> friends and uh, Mitchell has friends as well that are dealing with this craziness. These women are psych psychos. They're psychotic. This is the result of several generations that have been under the veil of feminism. Feminism is largely a lie um, it is not God's design. And now it, it, when we stray from God's design, we see the consequences, right? Eventually. And so God has this wonderful order that he created. He created man. He created woman. He created them equally, but with different strengths and with different reasons why he created them. Feminism is essentially saying women are the same as men. We don't need men. Um, and that is just not true. Women need men. Men need women. It's the same way. It goes back. It It is the same. Christianity is an equal um, religion. It is one that elevates men and women on the same platform. No other religion is like that. Most other religions elevate the man above women and see women as less than. That is not true. Yes, we see men as our leaders in Christianity, men as people that we are, um, as women, we are here to um, we are here to support and to come alongside and we are their helper. God created women to be the helper, but that is in a very important role. And women have largely rejected that role over the past several years because they have been told that it is a role that is less than that is not true. The Bible tells us that that is not true. And we have fallen a prey to that lie. I myself fell a prey to that lie, you know, in my younger days and, and in my early career days. Um, and I will tell every woman listening, every girl listening to me now, there is no greater role that you can have than wife and mother, just, just climbing the career ladder and, and padding the pockets of some organization that is not your family is not the most enriching thing that you can do with your life. Finding a good godly man is, and, and creating a wonderful, beautiful family together. If God wills it, unfortunately, we do have, uh, an issue with infertility for various reasons, being our food supply, medicine, uh, you name it in our country that many couples and women struggle with. But all of this is this, all of this is not using discernment in the way that, and not knowing scripture and not understanding the fact that these are all lies that we've, that we have been, um, fed and that feminism just really largely, it breaks down and it doesn't work. And it creates a lot of unhappy people, a lot of unhappy women, a lot of unhappy men. If we lean back into the de design that God created for us, we will be much happier and, and much better off. And we will all be equals in his, in his divine kingdom. And we just have different strengths. So when you're a woman versus when you're a man, and, um, I think that we need to, to lean into that. So it's, Yes, it's an unfortunate dichotomy that we've come across in this country. Yeah. And can we end with this? Two questions left. I want to talk about the jab quickly. We want to try to get this on YouTube. So we're going to tread very lightly on that tight rope, tight rope rather, to try to get this on YouTube as well, uh, not just on Rumble and some other stuff. 
Uh, so let's talk about the jab. Obviously, we're seeing the illegal immigration problem in this country. The illegals can come into the country. They don't need to get the jab. But you had to get the jab if you wanted to have a job. I was pushed into because, you know, I had some issues with not believing in Christ at the time. And some of the stuff that you were saying uh, really brought me back to my revival and how I came to believe again. Uh, regardless of that, these people are coming in. They're raping women. They're committing crimes, murdering people. They don't have to get the jab. Do you believe, as I do, that this is a plan to bring these people in? They don't know what freedom is or what it's about. Uh, they are the people that 70 percent of people in this country did get the jab. A lot of them are injured. A lot of them, you know, are women. They're having menstrual cycle mm -hmm. problems. They're not able to get pregnant now due to the jab. If they have if they get pregnant, they have miscarriages. The list goes on and on. Is this a population control issue where we're bringing in these people so we can take full advantage of these people with working them for slave wages, bring us back in the United States to feudalism instead of a republic like this country was founded on? I think that it has largely to do with wanting to gain voters. Absolutely. I think it okay. it does have a lot to do with wanting to gain voters to one particular party. I think that it just is another prime example of the spiritual battle that is taking right. place. And um, when you throw the sanctity of life out the window, when you start to say that God's innocent creatures inside a mother's womb do not have rights, when you start to say that babies, you can kill babies, then the whole, the whole concept of the sanctity of life goes under, goes out the window. Then we do not hold life to be precious. So therefore let's, you know, let's just not have a safe uh, border. You know, that's a safety issue. That is, right. that is a safety issue. It is also, you know, if you don't have a safe and secure border, that's what makes a country, right? We all, yeah. there's countries established all around the world. You have to have a secure border in order to uh, establish yourself as a country. So it's creating chaos. Satan loves chaos. Um, it is throwing the sanctity of life out the window when you're putting people in danger. That goes for the border. That goes for uh, experimental medical, um, you know, treatments. treatments. Um, that's what we'll call it here for this. Um, you know, when you're saying that it doesn't matter if um, you get sick from this, if you have debilitating injury from this, um, your job is requiring this. It doesn't matter if you can, if you miscarry, if you no longer, uh, you know, that's going back on the whole, I'm putting myself above everyone else um, and, and saying, you know, oh, my life and my job matters more than my well, there's unborn men child now, or future. Karen, that are getting vasectomies now. Because mm -hmm. they want to say that they are for a woman. And mm -hmm. how are they for a woman? How are they for a family when they're getting vasectomies? I mean, this I whole imagine. country is a total joke. I went on a rant on a Delaware radio station, conservative radio station this morning that, you know, the flag should be upside down right now. It is an SOS right now in this country. And People are so we, confused. People yeah. are just so confused. They don't have that foundational truth that the Bible gives them to stand firm on. So they are going to be, you know, pushed with the wind to and fro, and they're going to be convinced uh, and and move their goalposts on a regular basis, just like the world does, just like society does. You have to have that firm foundation. You have to know what's in your Bible. You have to understand it. There is no better time than now to do so. There it is never too late to dive in and to understand scripture, to know God more and to establish a relationship with him spiritually and through prayer. And, and he will guide you. You don't have to know every word of the Bible. The Holy Spirit and God has put on our hearts what is right and what is wrong. Even people that don't that are not religious, that are not Christians, they know when they're doing things that are right and, and wrong. But again, Satan is the author of lies. So these people that are that are taking that are doing these these various things that don't make sense, um, on the surface they might think that that's true, but deep down they their heart of hearts is going to tell them at some point that 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 is wrong, that they have been confused, they have been lied to, and it's a big. It's just all of it is a spiritual battle, and it. I know for so many people it might seem like 
Satan is winning, but he's not. He is not winning. Do not let this, all of the things that are happening, discourage you. You have the the Holy Spirit inside of you to take control of your, your life and to take control, take every thought captive, just like the Bible tells us to, and to live a positive, enriching life enriched by the Holy Spirit inside of you. You do not have to fall prey to all of these negative things that you are being and these lies that you are being uh, succumbed to every day on media. That's why it's important to filter what you are looking at. And so that way you don't start to uh, think that things like getting a vasectomy is for a woman. That makes no sense whatsoever. Women were created, um, God willing to have children and to, uh, you know, and to be fruitful and to multiply. And it is such a fruitful endeavor. And you can't do that if you are getting a vasectomy. That is a man that has been very confused by, um, again, that's a trickle down of feminism. And feminism, by telling women that career their themselves, their own pleasures, their own fun, and their own happiness are more important than having a child and saying, oh, you can be like a man and you can go uh, get rid of your child whenever you you like so you can take part in things um, without any consequences. That is a lie. These women will eventually be very, um, they will be very hurt emotionally by those things. And they, you know, nobody talks about the, the consequences, both physically and emotionally that come with ending your child's life and getting an abortion. Many women are hurt uh, physically through abortion. There's a lot of uh, side effects that take place, but um, you know, it's just all this perversion of, of truth and people have succumbed to the lies. Social media has been a huge perpetrator of the lies of anxiety of, um, you know, of making us all very anxious and everything. And so that's why you have to go back to the Bible to, to help yourself. And that's something that I talk about too, in the book, so many people, we don't know how to rest anymore, which is what I was talking about, how social media is the breaking point for understanding that we've been on this fast pace for far too long. Technology has escalated that and, you know, entertainment and, and us always thinking that we need to be entertained and, and things like that. And that we work to be entertained rather than working for the glory of God. And, um, and so rest has now become because Satan is the author of lies. Rest has now become for so many people. I fall prey to this sometimes too, scrolling through our phones and zoning out on social media, zoning out on our phones. Well, scientifically, that's not true because you're still getting your brain's still getting that dopamine hit, and so you're actually not, you know, resting and zoning out. And it's replacing our time in the Word. It's replacing our time with others. It's replacing our time resting. And so we, in the very last chapter, I go through Hebrews four and I break down verse by verse what the Bible is telling us about rest because. Resting on your phone is not a thing. That's that's a fallacy. And so um, we go through the formula and it's basically read, read the Bible and and reflect, let read, reveal, let the Bible reveal to you your shortcomings, reflect on those, aka uh, confess your shortcomings to the Lord and then receive, receive the Lord's grace and mercy. And that's how you are going to rest by receiving his grace and mercy. How can you receive God's grace and mercy? If you are at an all, you're always anxious, you're always depressed about what's going on around you. And you always feel like you're falling short of alleviating those horrible things that are happening. How can you receive his grace and mercy? If you are on edge like that, you have to be able to rest you have to be able to go into scripture and see, okay, this is how I can see Jesus as the ultimate influencer. This is how I can see where I'm I'm coming up short in my own life and in my own practices and in the way that I carry myself or interact with other people. That is not a detriment to that's not a detrimental thing to realize. That is a wonderful thing to realize because then the Bible's telling you how you can live a better life and how you can receive the Lord's grace and mercy. So rest is huge. We are not doing that as a society. Resting in social media is absolutely not um, a, a relief for anyone. We've got about three minutes left. I want to be gracious with your time. In a country where morals are hard to find, the economy's in peril, the deep state is running the country because we have a senile president, leave the audience with some hope after all that. 
<laughs> the hope is that people are hungrier than ever, right? People understand yeah. now that, you know, that what's going on in DC is not the end all be all. And no matter what candidate you are looking forward to this election, they are not your savior. Jesus Christ is your savior. And thank God for that because we are all flawed people. Um, you know, we're this, every single one of us is a sinner. This country and this world are run by sinners. And so we have this wonderful truth knowing that we will, if we accept Jesus into our lives, that we will forever and eternally be in a better place in heaven and then eventually here on earth when Jesus comes back. So, you know, we have that hope that no matter what happens, we can lean on the Lord. And I think we have COVID showed us that leaning on the Lord leads us in a better place. COVID has been a big catalyst for a revival around the world, people leaning into Jesus, people leaning into their faith. I think the economy is also showing us that we can lean on the Lord, that he will provide provide for us in ways that we um, you know, never really ever expected. That's something that we've always, as Americans, thought that we had total control over, right? If we just work hard enough, if we just try hard enough, we can achieve the American dream. So many people are doing that and they still can't pay their bills. But God in some way is providing for them, is still um, coming coming through for them in ways that you know maybe aren't obvious, but if they step back and look, they're like, wow, okay, I'm still here. I'm still on my own two feet in a way, not in the way that I had hoped for or dreamed for, but in a very, in a different way. All of this is leading us to know that we need to lean on God and it's a wonderful thing. And when you start to let go of the control in your life and start to give it to him, wonderful, wonderful things happen. Again, the book, the only life that matters is God using the Bible to transform your life on social media, terrengregson.com, drivingdisciples.org, shotdead.org, uh, Terran Grayson on Instagram, Twitter, and obviously on Rumble, it's Faithful Freedom with Taryn Gregson if you want to watch uh, some of her shows uh, from the past. Uh, Taryn, I don't know, I know we're about out of time right now. If you want to give a tease for Driving Disciples, you're more than welcome. I know you're going to roll with the kids, so I'll let you have at it as we end. Thanks. Yes, my newborn's crying in the other room, but we just concluded our summer camp for the year. It went fantastically. And so please continue to pray for that ministry and see where God leads that for us next summer. And you can follow along with everything happening in all of my various ministry efforts that my husband and I take part in. If you go to TarynGregson.com slash newsletter, I send out a newsletter every week, just informing people of the various things we're doing um, via social media and through our community to help make social media a better place and our families and communities around us. So Taryn Gregson, com slash newsletter and at taryngregson.com slash book i have resources for how to make this into a bible study um, for your churches i have um, memory verse screensavers up there for free um, you can request a free bookmark and lots of other resources on how to get this in your church library and various things like that taryngregson.com Taryn, thanks so much for your time always a pleasure having you on